Are you ready to turn your investments into retirement income? Listen in as Jeremy Kyle and his guests reveal ways you can make smarter retirement, investment, and tax planning decisions to achieve your ideal retirement. You will learn more about your money so you can feel better about your money and make better money decisions. Now, on to the show. Welcome to Retirement Revealed. I'm your host, Jeremy Kyle, and we're here to turn your retirement savings into a consistent income. Although today we're talking more about insurance, we have Tom Qualley from Sovereign Select here. Tom, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on. And we're, we're talking insurance, but we're talking specifically Medicare insurance. So you help out people with health insurance, especially Medicare. Maybe just describe a little bit about yourself and what you and Sovereign Select do. Sure. Basically, what we've we've done is we've been in business for about 13 years and specialized specifically in helping folks that are on Medicare find a suitable insurance plan for their needs. So our big approach has always been to educate. So we believe that the more education a person has, the more empowered they are in making a decision related to their Medicare. So whether it's a Medicare supplement, Medicare Advantage, Part D prescription drug plan, or some additional things like dental, vision, hearing, um, we're going to make sure that they know exactly what they're getting into. Yeah. And that's, I think, why we connected so well is we're big on education. That's why we have the the podcast here. You've got a lot of episodes, I guess. Episode might not be the the right word, but you, you've been on the morning blend. Right. And you have a lot of your videos out there talking right. about the education. Where can somebody find that education? So anybody can find that either on our website in the media section. So that's sovselect.com. So that's www.sovselect.com. Or they can just go to YouTube and search Sovereign Select. Perfect. We'll make sure we have a link to that in the show notes for go. everyone too. That that'll be great. And you mentioned a few things too that maybe I wasn't fully aware of. You mentioned the the dental, the vision, things like that. We're gonna get into Medicare specifically, sure. but if you don't mind, let's talk a little bit about dental and vision. A lot of our clients are turning sixty five. They've had dental and vision insurance their entire lives through their employer, and they are just freaked out about the thought of not having dental and vision insurance. I personally think it's not a big deal. <laughs> and uh, we talk about that. But uh, tell me about dental vision insurance once you actually leave employment and especially once you turn 65. What does it even look like if that were to be the case? Sure. So basically, I tend to agree with you in the sense that dental vision and hearing is probably not the most important piece of the puzzle. Um, the most important piece of the puzzle is obviously the health insurance and the prescription drug coverage. But to your point with the clients is that a lot of people go, well, I I have dental insurance now. It's very comforting to have that coverage and know that when you need it, you have something that you can use. Now, dental insurance, I've always traditionally kind of said, it's kind of a ripoff (laughs) (laughs) Um, because typically the typical dental plan is only going to have about a thousand dollar annual maximum worth of coverage. And typically it's going to cost an average of about $500 a year. So really, at the end of the day, if you exhaust all your coverage, you're maybe getting $500 worth of coverage for the year on dental insurance. Now, in relation to Medicare, Medicare doesn't cover dental, vision, or hearing services. So that's where a lot of people going on to Medicare go, well, Medicare doesn't cover this. I need to find something that's going to do this for me. Now, Things have changed in the Medicare market quite a bit. A lot of people are hearing about Medicare Advantage plans and seeing the commercials and all the mailings and all the things that are coming out saying, hey, we can give you these extra benefits within Medicare Advantage plans. Now, that's true. And Medicare Advantage plans have kind of helped in the sense that they typically provide within their programs, dental, vision, and hearing coverage, and even some more items that we haven't talked about yet. Okay. Well, it's, yeah, that's certainly a huge deal is people, how they feel about uh, insurance. And that's, right. it's beyond the numbers. It's almost like the feeling is definitely more important than the numbers. But I think you're right on that dental and vision. I, I think they should stop calling it insurance. It's basically a prepaid plan. Yeah. It's, it's like if you're going to the dentist every year, there's no surprise. You right. go to the eye doctor every year, there's no surprise. Where the difference is, is you are working for 30, 40 years. You had your dental and vision insurance like 90% of it paid for by your company, of course it seems like a good deal. Someone else is paying 90% of it. That's pretty typical. You're paying 100% of it. Once you get into it, you might not see that it's um, worth the the money. But hey, if it takes you a year or two to get used to it and just see how it works out, 
the last thing we want people to do is to feel uncomfortable going into their age 65 plus health insurance choices and fine, go ahead, get some dental and vision insurance, but actually talk to someone like Tom that knows what they're talking about and he can find you the right one. So well, that's why we get along so well, because comfort really is the most important factor here. I mean, it's, it's important to understand the products and understand the costs and all that stuff. But really at the end of the day, Comfort is the most important thing because the last thing you want is for a client to walk out the door and go, God, I just don't feel comfortable with this. I don't feel comfortable not buying dental insurance. Right. And like you said, if just buying a policy at, you know, at a cost of whatever that is for a year or two just to get comfortable with it and get comfortable with the idea of seeing the actual facts, fine. Yeah, and that works out. And maybe that's a reason why you, you tend towards the advantage. That's a big question everyone's coming to us with. Sure is what are the differences between Medicare Advantage versus Supplement? This is actually uh, the first of a, a series we're gonna do just on Medicare and insurance around that. And I'm gonna have an episode specifically on Advantage versus Supplement. But let's just briefly talk about this, Tom. If you could tell us, what is the, the biggest difference between Advantage versus Supplement and maybe some educational choices that people would, would probably tend people towards maybe leaning towards advantage or supplement for themselves. Sure. I'll give you a quick crash course. Perfect. I like that? it. So basically with Medicare, the first thing to understand before understanding Medicare supplements versus Medicare Advantage is understanding Medicare itself. So first we know that Medicare itself has really two parts that come from the federal government of Part A and Part B. Now in general between Part A and Part B there's some deductibles that the client would be responsible for when they start receiving services either in a hospital setting or an outpatient setting. Once those deductibles are met, in general, and just put it, to put a blanket on it, Medicare pays about 80% of a person's medical bills after those deductibles, leaving them responsible for the remaining 20%. Now, a supplement is going to basically help pay for either some or all of those deductibles and that remaining 20% that's left over. So, Supplements are nice in the sense that they're very comprehensive, very low out-of-pocket cost when a person receives services. However, the downside to Medicare supplements is they're going to pay a premium. On average, say a person turning 65, whether male or female, figure about $150 a month in addition to their Medicare Part B premium, which currently Medicare Part B premiums are $170.10 per month, which, by the way, from 21 to 2022 is a historical rate increase. <laughs> yeah, that's big. <laughs> yeah. Now, that's the Medicare supplements. Now, what Medicare Advantage plans do is they really kind of take over uh, providing the benefits of Medicare Part A, Part B, and typically include Part D prescription drug coverage, and also in many cases include a lot of those extra benefits like dental, vision, hearing. A lot of them have free gym memberships, some have transportation, some even offer like a Fitbit or over-the-counter medicines. They might say, we'll give you some money every quarter to spend on over-the-counter products, things like vitamins, supplements, Tylenol, Advil, cold medicines, even some crazy things like toothbrushes, toothpaste, toilet seats, handrails, that kind of stuff. So Medicare Advantage plans are definitely very popular these days, but the way that Medicare Advantage plans work is a person would typically continue paying their Part B premium, that 170-10, um, and a lot of Medicare Advantage plans have no premium on them whatsoever, but they are pay-as-you-go style plans. So based on the category of service that a person is going to receive, there may be a copay associated to it. So maybe $15 to go to the doctor, maybe $35 or $45 to see a specialist, maybe a couple hundred dollars or a few hundred dollars per day in the hospital for a period of days, maybe four or five or six days, and so on. Now, with those copays, all of those copays are going to go towards what's called an annual out of pocket maximum. So, what's great about Medicare Advantage is if a person doesn't use a lot of medical services, they may have a very low out of pocket cost for the year because they're paying very low or even maybe no premiums. But if a person then, say, goes a few years and say year four, boom, they have a really bad year, they're at least protected by having this annual out-of-pocket maximum on the Medicare Advantage plans. Now, Medicare sets a standard and says the maximum out-of-pocket maximum that can be on a plan is $6,700. 
Now, the average is really about $4,500 or $5,000 out of pocket. And statistically speaking, a very low number, less than 5% of people nationally actually hit their annual maximums each year. So even if a person has a lot of medical issues, it's really hard to get there. Hey, sorry for the interruption. It's Jeremy Kyle here, and I know you're listening to the Retirement Reveal Podcast because you want to learn more about making great retirement decisions. I've created a free video course for you to do just that. Head over to 5stepretirementplan.com and sign up to receive this video training right in your email inbox. We broke down our 5-step retirement plan into bite-sized videos so you can get started on the retirement, investment, and tax planning you need to create a consistent retirement income. Go to 5stepretirementplan.com, use the number or spell it out, you'll get there either way. 5stepretirementplan.com. Thanks for listening, and now for the rest of the show. Well, that's awesome, Tom. Thanks for that. That's really great info. Yeah, and of course. I like that you you broke it down into simple to understand type of, uh, you, have to, you have to actually, you see these terms, you have to actually understand them. And I love how you define things, especially like out-of-pocket and co-pays yeah. and things like that. Tell me if I'm wrong about this next statement. Okay, so, I'm ready. Yeah, let's let's go with it. So my general thought is if you are somebody that is going to be traveling or uh, somebody that just wants more choices, then a supplement is probably the way you're going to be looking at first. And on the other hand, if you're someone who is kind of healthier than average and maybe stays more local, then an advantage might be a better choice for you. Is that kind of a good general sense or where am I wrong? Generally, yes, that right. is correct. However... There are some kind of nuances to lifestyle to take into account when you're kind of thinking that through. So Medicare supplements are definitely, you know, if we look at Medicare supplements, you pay a premium, say, let's just call it that $150 a month. You can see any doctor anywhere in the country that agrees to bill Medicare and your coverage is the same coast to coast. Okay. So that's awesome. The second thing is since your coverage is the same, you're really not going to have out-of-pocket cost because the supplement is going to be paying maybe some or all of those deductibles and that remaining 20%. So really, you could have up to 100% coverage with Medicare supplements. So I basically always say Medicare supplements, whether you're traveling or you stay local or you want to use some specialty hospitals around the country, Medicare supplements are by far the most flexible and most comprehensive coverage you can buy when you're on Medicare. Now, Medicare Advantage plans, of course, are very cost effective as far as premium. I mean, you can't really beat zero premium unless they're paying you to have the plan. Um, but when you travel, Medicare Advantage plans do give you worldwide emergency and urgent care coverage. So if you're just traveling for short durations, like a week or two weeks or three weeks even here and there, typically Medicare Advantage is okay. Now, there's also some Medicare Advantage plans that allow you to access their network of doctors and hospitals nationwide if you're traveling. So if a person is, say, a snowbird and goes to Florida, Texas, Arizona, or wherever, you want to pick a plan if you're going to go towards Medicare Advantage that's going to have a strong network in both of the areas that you like to travel if you spend long periods of time somewhere else. Or you might want to look at a PPO versus an HMO that might be more flexible for travel than an HMO. Got it. Perfect. Well, that's uh, something that people ask us all the time. And that's why we say just go talk to the experts. <laughs> you deal only with health insurance, especially around the Medicare area. Right. And it's a huge part of retirement. That's why we feel that we've got a little bit better than average knowledge of Medicare and insurances and, and things like that. Yeah, we're not the experts. And there, just even talking with you and knowing you the last couple of years, a lot of times I was sending people to the Medicare plan finder, which is a great way to learn more about Medicare, especially in my mind, sure. uh, Part D drug coverages. And yet talking to you, you said that's, that is a good resource. Personally, I think it's one of the best things about the government is yeah. this uh, Medicare plan finder. Like it's, it's pretty easy, but you were sharing with me that actually, uh, while it's great, it doesn't get updated as often as it should. And you've got access right. to some other software that can help out with that. Right. So we use, we, we actually used to use the Medicare plan finder exclusively um, when we would just compare Medicare plans for people, specifically Medicare Advantage and prescription drug plans. Now on the Medicare plan finder, they don't compare cost of Medicare supplement plans. So it's really just federal plans, which are Medicare Advantage and Part D prescription drug plans. Now, a few years ago, and I couldn't tell you exactly when, but 
the software on Medicare.gov for the Medicare plan finder actually changed. They switched from one technology company to another, I won't name names. And the new software is actually less accurate than the previous software. Oh, got it. And so we find that when we're doing prescription drug pl plan comparisons, the prescription drug cost a lot of times actually is not correct. So mm -hmm. a lot of times we'll all just kind of manually figure it out and compare it and it just doesn't, it doesn't work out. So we have some other programs and third party systems that are created actually by the previous technology company that used to do Medicare.gov. And we find that that's much more accurate. Yeah. Now, for us, it makes more sense because every person that we deal with actually gets their own custom profile that they can go into. They can update their medications. They can update their doctors. Everything's saved in there with their profile. They can even go in there throughout the year and look at their plan, look at other plans in comparison to what they currently have. So it just kind of is a nice streamlined way and more accurate way of keeping their policy up to date. Yeah, it just shows the expertise of somebody that deals with it right. Right, day in and day out. John Sharon, you, you've got over a dozen agents that work with you right. selling Medicare, supplement, different uh, health insurance plans and things like that. Roughly how many clients do you guys serve your, your business? Well, if you're taking the agents into account, boy, probably five or 6,000 okay. clients. Uh, yeah, that just shows, okay, everyone signs up for Medicare once. Yeah. And potentially they look at their Medicare once a year, so maybe like, 30 times the max, yeah. right? Your, your business is looking at 6,000 Medicare right. <laughs> decisions every single year. Yeah. Uh, it just shows that, that the value of having somebody that knows what they're talking about yeah. being alongside of you and helping you out with your, your Medicare decisions. Yeah. This year, I probably looked at about 1,200 policies. Just you personally? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, good. I'm glad you're on the show here. <laughs> and I bet you get this question a lot. Uh, a lot of people are asking me, especially when it comes to Medicare supplement, well, I just got to figure out what it covers. And my answer is it covers... Well, Medicare covers. And they say, well, yeah, but I want to see what the supplement covers. It covers what well, Medicare covers. That's right. All it does is Medicare pays roughly 80%. Yep. If Medicare covers it, the supplement comes in with the other 20%. There, there's never going to be a, a point where Medicare says, we got it covered, and supplement says, no, we don't. And so there's a great a website. Again, Medicare.gov website. There's a coverage website. You can go on mm -hmm. to the website, see if this thing is covered, whatever is going to happen. You can see ahead of time, which is probably a worthwhile choice, especially if you're on a supplement to find out if it's covered. Otherwise, you probably want to call the Advantage Company to right. find out if it's covered as well, too. And I was sharing that with you, and you said, well, yeah, and the, even the app on the phone yep. is even better. What There's yeah, an app people now? People can download the app right onto their cell phone, their smartphone, whether it's an yeah. Android or an iPhone or whatever. And it's the Medicare Covers Me app. And basically, you can look up procedures, you can look up codes of procedures, and see how that coverage is going to be categorized and what level it's going to be at. So you can generally figure out about how it's going to be covered. However, in the you know medical field these days, they're not super transparent with cost. Mm -hmm. um, so you can't really get the exact cost of what you're going to pay for it. But at least you can see, is Medicare going to cover it for me or not? Right. With the app, you could be in the doctor's office when they're proposing something. You Absolutely. just look it up right there on the app. Is it covered or not? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It's Jeremy Kyle here, and I know you're listening to the Retirement Reveal Podcast because you want to learn more about making great retirement decisions. I've created a free video course for you to do just that. Head over to 5stepretirementplan.com and sign up to receive this video training right in your email inbox. We broke down our five-step retirement plan into bite-sized videos so you can get started on the retirement, investment, and tax planning you need to create a consistent retirement income. Go to 5stepretirementplan.com. Use the number or spell it out. You'll get there either way. 5stepretirementplan.com. Thanks for listening. And now for the rest of the show. Well, we got a few things we want to go through before sure. we, we wrap up. One of them is we talked about the differences between Medicare and, and um, Supplement Advantage kind of as you're getting into it. But another part is it's not like a one and done decision. Like you turn 65, you sign up for Medicare. I guess that part's one and done. But going forward, what should people be doing every single year if they're on a supplement plan, if they're on Advantage, if they have the Part D, what they should be, what should they be looking at? So I guess I'll tell you what our process is um, because I think our process speaks to what clients should be doing, but also what agents should be doing. 
And not all agents are the same. One of the biggest complaints that we've heard throughout my career, the complaints that I've heard throughout my career is when I'm talking to people that are already on Medicare and I say, well, have you reviewed your policy lately or in the last few years? They say, no. Have you, did you work with an agent? Yes. Who is your agent? I don't know. You know, a lot of people buy a policy and never look at it again. Now, anytime a person works with us, what we do is every single year in early September for every client that we have, we're going to send out a notice to them. It's time to review your policy. We're going to collect new medication information, new doctors, get a survey and get some just gather some information to make sure that we have the most accurate updated information on their situation and their lifestyle so that we can help them review their coverage every year and make sure that they're exactly where they need to meet need to be and they're making all the best decisions and i think that's probably the most important thing to do throughout time is really to find a trusted source so a trusted in my opinion independent agent that has access to many different insurance companies and many different products to be able to really show you and break down your situation compared to the products that are out there because people's needs change that's the number one thing, but also insurance companies are able to change their plans a bit, especially in relation to Medicare Advantage and Part D prescription drug plans. So those are very important to be reviewed every year. Got it. And speaking of re reviewing, a lot of times people are looking at this in terms of ages and when they need to sign up. Can you talk through, of course, there's there's a lot of them. We'll put the links out to there of the specific uh, enrollments. There's what, the special enrollment period, open enrollment, general enrollment. Did I miss one? Uh, you missed more than one. Oh, geez. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Share with us. What, what are these different enrollment times and the dates that are, that are out there for, for people with Medicare? Sure. So when a person's brand new to Medicare, they're going to get their first ever open enroll or their first ever enrollment period. Woohoo. Um, it's called their initial enrollment period, their Perfect. IEP. And what that does is that allows a person kind of a time period around their 65th birthday or their Medicare effective date, which could be earlier than 65 if they're disabled or something. But just for example purposes, let's say they're turning 65 in February. February 1st would be their uh, start date for their Medicare. So their IEP is going to be three months before the month of their birth month and three months after. So and let me get this right on this part. They really want to sign up before February 1. Okay. I, I would recommend it. Yeah. yeah. Like if, if their birthday's yeah. in February, a lot of people think it happens on my birthday. No, it's the first of the month is when you start your Medicare. And I really hope you get everything signed up before February 1 using this example. Preferably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just to make things easier and not have gaps in coverage. So they have that IEP. So if a person is ready to sign up for Medicare at the age of 65, they're going to use their IEP. Now we're finding more commonly people are working past age 65 and potentially or having the option of continuing on group insurance coverage. And if they're continuing to work and they're insured through that group, they can actually postpone their Part B benefits, which is the part, the portion of Medicare that actually has that cost associated to it, that 17010. Now, Part A doesn't actually cost anything for any for somebody to have, so they can postpone Part B while they're working and continuing to be insured. Now, if they decide that they want to leave that group insurance because maybe they compare it to something with me and they find, wow, Tom actually was able to beat my group insurance like crazy and I should have done this a long time ago, they can sign up for Part B at any time under a special enrollment period and also sign up for a plan, whether it's a Medicare supplement or Medicare Advantage plan. So that's where the special enrollment periods come in. Now there's a whole bunch of special enrollment periods that can happen like retirement, loss of group insurance coverage. If a person moves from one county to another county and the plans are different, they can get a special enrollment period. Also for people that have lower incomes and qualify for what, are, what is called extra help or Medicaid in their state, they can also get special enrollment periods for that. Now outside of that, there are some very standard enrollment periods that are just kind of there every year, um, like clockwork. So first we have the annual enrollment period, which is the time period where everybody is seeing the commercials. Every other commercial is a Medicare commercial, mm -hmm. right? I believe it. Um, you get about two feet stack of mail uh, in your mailbox and you get a bunch of unsolicited phone calls from people you didn't request information from. <laughs> um, that time period is October 15th to December 7th. 
Now, during that time, a person can shop around, compare, and review their Part D prescription drug coverage and their Medicare Advantage coverage and make changes as necessary. Now, that ends December 7th, and then from January 1st to March 31st is another enrollment period called the Medicare Advantage Open Enrollment Period. Now, during this time, and I lovingly call this the buyer's remorse period. So this is a time period where after the annual enrollment period, if a person either missed the annual enrollment period and didn't do something that they maybe should have, or maybe they did something during the annual enrollment period, like made a change to their policy that they regret or maybe shouldn't have made, or maybe got bad guidance, they have that first quarter of the year to make one correction to their policy or one change. Got it. Perfect. So we got IEP, which is initial enrollment period, the special enrollment period, annual enrollment, and open enrollment. Yep. We'll, we'll write those all down and define those them. All, those are all fun, aren't they? Yeah, that's exactly it. But I want to uh, talk more about the special enrollment period, period, where I hear from people all the time of, okay, your special enrollment period means, or no, let's go back a little bit. People say to me, I'm turning 65, I have to sign up for Medicare because they've been told for basically 40 years that you have to sign up for Medicare at 65. And all their friends are 65 right. and they sign up for Medicare. And they generally don't believe me when I say, you don't have to sign up for uh, for Medicare at 65, but you probably want to. And I'm just thinking some, some reasons why you may not want to sign up for, for Medicare at 65. One of them is a lot of our clients now more and more are part of these HSAs, health savings accounts. Okay. And once you're on Medicare, you can't add money to the HSA. Is that, that right? No on? longer contribute. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's A or B. Like, correct. of course you can't have B without A, but right. if you sign up for any Medicare, if you're on A or A and B, you cannot contribute yourself to the uh, health savings account. Correct. So basically you cannot contribute to an HSA account three months prior to your 65th birth month once if you're if you're signing up for Medicare. Mm -hmm. Now one thing to be careful about is the Social Security Administration typically automatically enrolls people in Medicare Part A. Yes. If so, you're on Social Security, they will automatically send you your card. Yep. Well even if you're not on Social Security, they'll sign you up for Part A but not part B. Oh, there you go. And you may not even get a card in the mail. So it's mm -hmm. just kind of sitting there in the background. You're enrolled. You have no idea. Now, if you're on Social Security benefits, they're actually going to automatically enroll you in Medicare Part A and Part B and send you a card. So really for people who are on Social Security prior to age 65, they don't really have to do anything to get on the Medicare. Right. It's just automatically going to happen. So once they get that card, they go, well, I'm going to call Tom at Sovereign Select and then we take it from there. Got it. And that's where it is interesting, where there are some people that don't want to be on Part B because right. perhaps their group coverage is actually better. And if they're automatically signed up, we can help you get out of Part B because that was an automatic right. thing for you. So it's it's a most likely situation that you sign up for Part A. It's a most likely situation that you sign up for Part B. may even be already done for you by Social Security, but it's not a have to. Like, exactly. There's a lot of rules that may you say you probably do. It's worth educating yourself. Talk to someone like myself that can go through the financial picture and talk about the HSAs and, and things like that. Uh, talk to someone like Tom that can talk about is it worthwhile to actually switch out of your group coverage over to some sort of Medicare plan. Oftentimes, it is going to be cheaper, better coverage for you if you end up in a Medicare plan, whatever it is. Sometimes it's not exactly the case. I've seen it happen both ways where it says, oh, my goodness, this uh, group health plan through your employer is a better deal. So, you know, you don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, group insurance it. just isn't the same as it used to be. You That's know, true. Too. Back yep. in the 70s and 80s, those were the good old days of, of group insurance where it was like, I have insurance. Oh, well, I don't pay a premium. I don't mm -hmm. have a deductible. Everything's covered 100%. I mean, that that would be great if that was still the case. It's just not. Group insurance has a cost associated with it typically. Um, they typically have higher deductibles, higher cost sharing levels, higher out-of-pocket maximum uh, levels, and especially family plans can be really expensive as well if you're still carrying a spouse or children um, when you're getting closer to Medicare. So to your point on, on the group insurance is that one one major reason and one of the main reasons why people want to postpone Medicare Part B benefits is because they're still working past age 65 and still receiving coverage through that group. Now, in that respect, though, I still always recommend 
let a let a professional take a look at that group insurance and just make sure that that group insurance is actually worth taking after 65 because we find in many cases that the group insurance just isn't very good Mm -hmm. and even signing up for part a and part b and maybe a supplement or an advantage plan is more worthwhile than to than to take the group so they could continue working but just leave the group I, I like it. And we're going to define something real quick because sure. it always shows up, especially when I'm, I'm helping people. I've, I've helped over 100 people sign up for Medicare specifically. And we've, we've given that advice to a lot of people as well too. But there's a, a term that just confuses everyone. And Social Security will ask you the Medicare question of, are you covered under group health insurance? What does group health insurance actually mean? It means active employment. And so a lot of people on their own look and say, oh yeah, I've got my retiree group coverage that doesn't count. Or they say, oh no, I don't have my own group insurance because I'm not working. Yes, but you're on your spouse's group insurance because he or she is working. So group health insurance for Medicare specifically means somebody, you or your spouse, is actively working, actively employed, getting their group coverage because of that employment has nothing to do with uh, retiree coverage doesn't help, uh, doesn't count. And it doesn't have to be actually you working, just has to be you're getting the coverage because somebody's working. Is that- that's that's actually a great point. Yeah. Because, you know, that's why I kind of was harping on the fact that if you're still working and receiving the group insurance yes. coverage, you can postpone part B. But even if you retire and you continue and you have the opportunity to keep the group insurance into retirement, you still have to sign up for Medicare Part B. Otherwise, yes. there's a penalty associated to Part mm-hmm. B later on if if you go back and say, well, I'm going to sign up for Part B now after five years of retirement, there's going to be a penalty on that Part B premium down the road. Got it. Well, thank you, Tom, for coming along. Uh, you're and, very welcome. And doing so much to educate all of us about Medicare. You certainly educated me. You've educated our, our listeners. So thank you for that. How is the best way that people can get a hold of you? Uh, so basically, either drop by the website, www.savselect.com. You can also call our office directly, 262 641 4111, or email tom at savselect.com. Excellent. So everyone reach out to Tom if they've got Medicare questions. And before we finish, you uh, shared something with me just a couple days ago. I want you to share this great news with everybody else. It's related to specifically Wisconsin, uh, but I think it applies to a lot of other states. Half our listeners are in Wisconsin. So if, you, if you're not from Wisconsin, still listen. But what's the deal with these five-star plans? Let's just, let's just leave everyone with the, the last bit of awesome Tom knowledge about nice. these uh, five-star plans. Uh, what, are you, what are we talking so about that? Wisconsin, this this year for 2022 has kind of exploded in the sense of uh, Medicare has given a lot of our Medicare Advantage plans available in Wisconsin a five-star rating. Now, a five-star rating in and of itself is a special enrollment period. So that's one of those special enrollment periods that, you know, there's a whole bunch of them. But this one, if you want to enroll in a new plan, even outside of any other enrollment period like that October 15th to December 7th, January 1st to March 31st, you can if it's a five-star plan. So there's actually a whole bunch of five-star plans available in Wisconsin that people can shop with and see if it's a program that makes sense. And the five-star plans basically mean that Medicare has determined that these plans provide quality coverage, great customer service, um, and just meet or exceed what they would expect out of a Medicare plan. Great. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. The, the five-star plan is great news for Wisconsin. I think great news for Wisconsinites, or if you're not in Wisconsin, look around for the five-star plans. A lot of people know about the the annual enrollment starting October 15th. They're probably listening to this maybe in uh, March or April thinking like, oh, wait, this is great news, but I can't do a thing about it until the fall. Some people maybe know about the beginning of the year with open enrollment. Looks like every day of the year, you ought to be looking at your Medicare and you've got the opportunity to talk to someone like Tom to, to yeah. see if you can get a, a better deal. Yeah, we know we know all the tricks. I like it. That's good. Awesome. Well, thanks, Tom, for coming on, oh, thank sharing you for all the tricks. Me. I Absolutely. appreciate it. And you made it uh, right here to the office, which is always fun, too. Yeah. It's nice to sit across from you and, and, and hang I out. I like face-to-face. I prefer it, even in these crazy times. Exactly. Oh, good. Well, thank you, Tom. And thank you, too, for listening to the Retirement Reveal podcast. We believe if you know more about your money, you will feel better about your money and you will make better money decisions. Thank you for listening to the Retirement Revealed podcast. Click on the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. 
Visit retirement-revealed.com to learn more. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Kyle Financial Partners. Kyle Financial Partners does not provide legal, accounting, or tax advice. Consult your attorney or tax professional. Representatives have general knowledge of the Social Security tenants. For complete details on your situation, contact the Social Security Administration. Kyle Financial Partners is a part of the Thrivent Advisor Network, a registered investment advisor. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning.